Hello friends, and welcome to a look at how I built the title card I used in last week's video to show the tip numbers. And quite a few people have asked this week what effects I use and how I set up the background burnt ember effect. So I thought I'd make a video about it this week just to show what I did. And all I originally wanted to have on screen was a number to show at the start of each tip section. But I decided to animate it in open tunes to make it more interesting. And then I wanted some kind of moving background again to add some interest. So how did I do it? Well, first I added this purple background and this is just a vector level with a gradient filled rectangle using the gradient effect just here and then I edited these two colours to make it larger at the bottom and darker at the top. And I could have just used an effect for this but it's nice to be able to edit the colours in real time and the fewer effects you use the quicker you can edit the scene and the quicker the animation renders. And the next three columns control the burnt embers and this is probably the more interesting area of this animation. So first I added the particle effect node that controls the movement of the particles and you can find that in the FX schematic under add effects, render, particles and I use the falling snow effect. And then I added a tune raster level where I drew the actual particles to render. And if I zoom in you can see these are just four different sized, different coloured particles and these are plugged into one of the texture inputs of the particle effect here. And I wanted them to glow, so I also added the glow to the output of the particle effect and also a transparency so they wouldn't be so bright. Now if I hit preview you can see the effect here in the top window. And I've not used particle effects much before, so this was the first time experimenting with it properly. And if you simply double click on the node to show the settings, you can see all the parameters you can change. But I changed a couple of these until I got the effect I wanted. And to be honest, I can't even remember which ones I changed now. So my advice to you would be to just experiment with the values and see which makes the effect work better for you. But if you click the FX Help button at the top right, you get a pop-up detailing what each of the values changes. So have a go with this effect and see if it can work for you. So then I added the numbers, which is just a vector column, so I could use the type tool to add the number. And I resized it to this final size that I wanted, and did this for three drawings. You can see them over here. And these are all drawings in the same level, and then I copied each drawing into a separate column. And I wanted the number to grow larger to appear on screen. And at first I used the animate tool directly on the number level, but then I found I was duplicating this same zoom for each number. And when I changed the timing for one, I had to change it for all of them, and it seemed wrong. So I added a control column, and that is just a column to hold the animate values, and by pairing to this to each of the number columns, this animation scale was used for them. So if we look back at the stage schematic, you can see the number zoom column here, and I've got each of the three number columns parented to that. And this meant I only had to set up the zoom value in one place, just here. So this means if I later do a top 5 countdown or a top 10 and use the same scene, I can add the other numbers quicker and they'll all share the same timing. So if we take a look at the animation values, you'll see it expands from 1 through to 110, which is slightly larger, and then comes down back to 100% size. And this seemed a little boring, so I wanted to add a glow. And this was simply a duplicate of the number drawing, which meant if I visually changed the number in any way, I wouldn't need to change it in the glow column. And then I added a simple glow effect, as you can see here. And the full glow was too bright, so I added a transparency. And again for efficiency, I added one effect and used this overnode to pipe all of the numbered glow columns in which meant if I edited the effect for one number, the same effect was used for all of the numbers. And if I add another numbered column, I can plug it in here and it'll use the same effect. The benefit of the over effects is you can add as many inputs as you like, and as you add more input columns, there's a new blank input added to the bottom, ready for adding more. And if we look at the values in the function editor, we can see that it grows at the same scale from 1 to 110, 
as the number column expands, but then it expands further at the end, and the added transparency effect fades out the last few frames. And then I thought I'd add some audio. So I recorded me saying the numbers, and I added an echo and a reverb effect in Audacity, exported it, and then dragged the WAV file into OpenTunes, and then positioned it to match the animation. And I did that by placing it roughly where it needs to be, you can click and drag the handle on the left to move the position up and down. And then with the volume turned on, as you scrub through the animation, you can figure out exactly where you want the audio to be. So finally, to render this out, I simply enabled the columns using the top eyeball button, and then set the name for the output and hit render. Then I turn off the number one columns, turn on the number two, and then render it to a new file. And then the same again for number three, turn on the number three columns. And again, render this out to a new file called number three. So that was it. And no doubt I'll make changes to these title cards as I use them again. I've already thought about adding a glow to the bottom of the numbers to emphasize the imagined fire below, but it's okay enough to use for now. So that's just a small number of effects, but together they add up to quite a nice result. And by no means is this the best or ideal way to set it up, but as with a lot of effects in OpenTunes, there's always more than one way to do them. So that's it for today. Subscribe for more OpenTunes tutorials, tips and news, and also to follow along as I work on my Future Armour project, and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. So I'll see you next time for another video, and that's a guarantee.